how reliable are you in a pinch? If someone uh, around you calls for help, you say, yes, I will be there. I'll come and give you that help with that furniture, with that project, with that, with a meal, whatever it is when they're sick. Uh, how reliable are you at dealing with that? Uh, one of the things that God held against one of the nations around Israel as he, he spoke through the prophet Ezekiel, the judgment he's going to bring, was on being a flaky friend, uh, being <coughs> unreliable in delivering aid that you have promised. The nation, Egypt. Egypt, very famous from uh, Israelite history. They had leaned on them in the past and been saved through them, even as Israel had brought a blessing to them through Joseph and the family of Joseph and, and the family of Jacob uh, hundreds of years ago. But of course, they turned on them and uh, put them in captivity. We haven't heard of them for some time, although through Israel's uh, history of kingship, any time they've been troubled to the north and to the east, who had they called on for help? Egypt. Let's pray. Let's find out what God's got to say. Father, thank you for your word. And we pray, please, as we understand uh, about how these nations dealt with each other, help us to learn to be totally reliable uh, in giving help and aid to those around us. Help us not to be fair weather friends. Uh, and we pray that we would um, learn how to pick them in terms of our neighbours as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're in Ezekiel and we're in chapter 29. Ezekiel has been bringing a word of judgment against the nations surrounding Israel. He's done all of the immediate neighbours, but now he turns his attention to a little bit further afield and, and they are going to be the subject of the next uh, couple of things, and that is... Uh, the nation of Egypt, this uh, famous uh, place from his, in their own history. What has God got to say? Well, Ezekiel 29 verse 1, In the tenth year, in the tenth month, on the twelfth day, the Lord of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak to him and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm against you, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, you great monster lying among your streams. You say the Nile is mine. I made it for myself, but I'll put hooks in your jaws and make the fish of your stream stick to your scales. I'll pour you out from among your streams <clears throat> with all the fish sticking to your scales. I will leave you in the desert, you and all the fish of your streams. You will fall on the open field. And not be gathered or picked up. I will give you as food to the beasts of the earth and the birds of the air. Then all who live in Egypt will know that I am the Lord. You have been a staff of reed for the house of Israel. When they grasped you with their hands, you splintered and you tore open their shoulders. When they leaned on you, you broke and their backs were wrenched. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will bring a sword against you. And kill your men and their animals. Egypt will become a desolate wasteland. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Because you said the Nile is mine, I made it. Therefore, I am against you and against your streams. And I'll make the land of Egypt a ruin and desolate waste from Migdol to Aswan, as far as the border of Cush. No foot of man or animal will pass through it. No one will live there for 40 years. I'll make the land of Egypt desolate among devastated lands and her cities will lie desolate 40 years among ruined cities and I will disperse the Egyptians among the nations and scatter them through the countries yet this is what the sovereign Lord says at the end of 40 years I will gather the Egyptians from the nations where they were scattered I will bring them back from captivity and return them to upper Egypt the land of their ancestry then they uh, they will be a lowly kingdom it will be the lowliest of kings and will never exalt itself above the other nations. I will make it so weak that it will never again rule over the nations. Egypt will no longer be a source of confidence for the people of Israel, but will be a reminder of their sin in turning to her for help. Then they will know that I am the sovereign Lord. We'll finish there. There's more to say about Egypt uh, because there's a, there's a little moment of history in between that we'll look at in our next devotion uh, before he gets back to uh, this, this condemnation. 
But what has he said about Egypt, uh, this, this nation that's been a help and a hindrance in the past? Well, his two big issues with them, one is their arrogance. They, they think they are the bee's knees. Uh, none of the, the big empires from the, uh, the area over between the Tigris and Euphrates, Assyria or, um, uh, or uh, uh, Babylonia, had ever managed to conquer and so they were sitting pretty in the north of Africa and uh, they dominated the nations around them uh, down to the south and the west uh, and they, they in their arrogance they said well because we are self-made men we are self-made people we are a self-made nation we made the Nile we own the Nile and no one can take it from us and so there was a definite arrogance to them but you notice that the big issue, both in terms of their sin, but also in terms of what Israel have got to learn for the future and the people of God have to learn, is that Israel's unreliable. They have been, he says, like a staff made out of reeds. You know, uh, the reeds that grow in the, the edge of the water, they're, they're tall and uh, some of them can grow quite thick. Uh, and so on, and you think, wow, that would make a good walking stick. Well, as soon as you go to do it, though, it's really just a piece of grass that's going to bend and break on you. Uh, and so Israel, every time a king had called for help, and Israel, Egypt had said, yeah, sure, we're sending the chariots, we'll send the army, we'll defend your borders against Ammon and against Persians and against others, uh, they would uh, flee from battle or they wouldn't turn up at multiple times that it happened and it's evil uh, according to god he's going to judge them for it uh, and that is uh they yeah you know, when you give your word it's a huge thing in the scriptures the giving of your word and the keeping of it that being able to be relied upon why is it so important to god well because that's part of his character he can be totally relied upon when he makes promises when he says he'll come to your aid he will do it. He will never let you down. He'll never leave you in the lurch. It's a wonderful thing about our God, the true and living God, that when he makes promises, he will keep them. But Egypt have been these flaky friends. They've, they've promised the world. They've promised to be there in times of need. They've promised to come to the aid, to the defense of, of, this, of the people of God, and yet they've let them down every single time. And so the judgment's coming on them. It's interesting that he pictures judgment in terms of fishing. I don't know if you've ever been uh, out fishing in uh, river systems and uh, there's, there's lots of problem fish, uh, the, uh, fish that uh, you are not allowed to throw back uh, if you catch them in the rivers of Australia because they introduce pests. Uh, redfin, uh, uh, carp, of course, uh, and there are some others as well. Uh, that if you catch them, you're not allowed to return them. Then no one wants to eat them either, and particularly carp full of bones and taste muddy. And uh, apparently there's good ways to prepare them to make them taste good, but I uh, haven't discovered it yet. <laughs> um, but what you normally do is just you chuck them into the bushes and uh, yeah, mercifully you kill them. But that's the picture here. I'm going to pull you, yeah, the fish from your strings and it's going to dump them in the bushes and they stink. You come back the next day and the flies are on them and this pong of rotting uh, fish corpse. And he says, that's what you will be. In fact, uh, for 40 years, you're going to be a desolate wasteland because Babylon is going to conquer you. They will succeed where they haven't before because I'm giving you into their hands but unlike the other nations around who the, the judgment was promised to come there is this note of hope for egypt i'm going to return you after those 40 years and bring you back there is this hope for the people of the, the, the peoples of this world um and, and, and that's great isn't it because it's not only that we promised hope for israel yesterday as we looked at the destruction of the promise on sidon but uh, uh, he is blessing to the nations that there is mercy from our God on the people as well. It's not just Israel that he concerned about. Uh, that was always true in the Old Testament. In fact, when he called Abraham, he said, you're going to be a blessing to the nations. Uh, in fact, God's purpose was to bring blessing. His people in Exodus 19 were called to be a priesthood 
a nation who's a priesthood to the rest of the world. They used to introduce God to the world. And but it wouldn't be until the Lord Jesus Christ that that would really come about when the the fruit of Israel, the descendant of Israel, would bring blessing to the nations as salvation's one in his name through his wonderful cross and resurrection and hope can come to all. But here for Egypt is going to be a temporary thing. Why is this judgment coming? Well, because they've been unreliable and because God wants to teach his people in the future not to rely on the unreliable ones. Uh, and so Egypt will never again be the superpower it once was. And you see it today, it's poor, uh, it's a fairly big area, but it's never been the empire that it was in the past. And so God's word has been fulfilled. He will always bring about his word. What is it going to teach us? Well, don't be unreliable. If you uh, uh, have friends who ask for help, be the, be the first one to say, yes, I'm going to be there. Uh, one of my friends uh, from America, Bob, who, who tunes into our services uh, very regularly, uh, one of his phrases is, if you can see something that needs doing, it's in your power to do it, just do it. <laughs> That's, it's good for picking up mess off the floor, even if you didn't create it, you see something that needs doing, it's in your power to do it. Just do it. If you see something that he's doing around the church grounds, uh, there's something, and it's in your power to do it, do it. Just just go fix it up. Don't need to create a fuss about it. Just just deal with it. Uh, and so we've been calling on our God to be kind, to love our neighbours, uh, but also to be totally reliable when we do offer help that we fulfil it. Then we're not just this fair where the friends like Egypt were. We're going to be there when it's difficult. We're going to be there through the trials. We're going to be there um, having given our word in faithfulness, in love. We're going to put ourselves out. That's what God's calling us to be. I mean, that's what he's done for us, isn't it? God is the ultimate uh, friend to us in our need, that he saw our sin, our depravity, our the death and the judgments coming, and he came to deal with it all through the Lord Jesus it's such an amazing thing and such a great model for us. Uh, and it, Like we've been seeing, though, all these things are negative examples so that we might see the truth on her to be uh, reliable, why it's so important and so at the heart of God. But also, I think he wants us to wise up and, and note that there are people who are unreliable around us and not to rely on them. We can pray for them. We might encourage them. Uh, there might be ways that we can uh, work with them to uh, help them to grow in their discipline and faithfulness. But in the end, he's saying, don't rely on the unreliable. Rely on what's totally reliable. What's totally reliable is the Lord God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who's in charge, the one who's loved us and given his son for us. Let's pray to him. Father, thank you for your word. And we pray that you'll teach us to be faithful to be reliable when we give our word to fulfill it we pray that we might be those who are seeking to benefit those around us uh, and not just in it for ourselves certainly protect us from pride the pride of egypt but also their failure to be of any substance please protect us from and please father help us to be discerning as we look for help around us and build relationships Help us to recognize that this is a reality about uh, some in this world and teach us to deal with them rightly. Not that we wouldn't love them and point them to Jesus, but that we wouldn't pin our hopes on them. Help us to pin our hopes to trust you, the one who is totally reliable, the one who's in charge, the one who loves us and has already acted for our benefit. Thank you for your love and mercy. Teach us to be like you and help us to rely on you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless everyone. Catch you again tomorrow.